Michael and I had had a relationship with Ethan from our last movie. He was in our last film and we had such a good experience with him. See, I know Peter and Michael. I met them years ago and felt very clearly that they have a unique voice that I really respond to. And they have the same taste in genre movies that I do. And when we wrote the screenplay, I think Michael and I both said, you know, this would be perfect for Ethan Hawke. We sent Ethan the script on Thanksgiving. He read it that day. He gave us a call and said, I'm in. I just have one question. Which part am I playing? And Peter and I both looked at each other and we thought, uh, not sure yet. <laughs> we'll figure that out. The whole character that I play throughout this movie is unique. How are we going to pull this off? Who, who is going to be playing what part? And at what point do the parts cross over? Should the part of the unmarried mother and Jane be one actor? Or should the part of Jane and the unmarried mother be two different actors, two genders? What we thought was the most interesting choice was to find one actor that could play both parts. Creatively, it was probably the most challenging decision that we had to make. It was also one that was discussed right from the start. And to the Spirig's eternal credit, it was an idea that they, that they came to the project with and pursued. That's a frightening prospect to think that we could find someone to pull it off, because if you don't pull it off, the whole movie falls apart. I believe it's one of the hardest makeups you can do is to try and take a male or a female and turn them into the, the opposite gender. And then we came across Sarah Snook. To develop a character that is the same person with someone who is not the same as you, nor the same gender as you, <laughs> um, posed some difficulties. We're on uncharted territory. Our characters are either oddly similar or exactly the same, depending on how you view it. I think it's always a question of differentiating yourself and finding some kind of sameness. There's no rule about how we're supposed to do that. The saving grace, I think, is that I'm not playing a man, I'm playing a, a man who was once a woman. And so um, I did speak to a friend of mine who is um, transgender and has recently made, made the transition from female to male. Um, and got a little bit of insight into what the process is today to do that. But also like, um, how you feel mentally and emotionally and what things you feel like you do have control over and what things you don't have control over. And that gave a really good foundation and background from which to work from. The first thing we did when we started working on the script was just to try and adapt as much of the short story as we could. So we literally just took the short story and put it into a screenplay format and realised that that was only about 25, maybe 30 pages, which is almost the length of a one act in a screenplay. So we decided to look at what was in that short story and think about how we could expand it and what the elements were that we needed to add to make it a complete story and, and have the characters actually go through a significant arc and, tell that story in a, in, a, in a cinematic screenplay way rather than just a, a 10 page short story. When I read the short story and when I read the scenes that the Spirigs had released to audition with, um, I could tell that there, were a, there, there was a lot more um, going on in the script than already present in the short story. There's a number of things in the screenplay that doesn't exist in the short story. The character of Robertson is just, it's, it's not there. I like those ambiguous uh, characters who work in, a, in the world of intelligence. He's a character that Michael and I both felt needed to be in the film as a kind of mentor and a guide into this world, into this time travel world. He's seen what man can do and he understands that sometimes terrible decisions have to be made in order to protect the world at large. I grew up watching Noah Taylor on, on screens in Australia, so to have Noah as part of Predestination was quite a thrill. Well, I first saw the, the workshop scene that we did, which was a scene in the script that Peter and Michael had been hesitant to write, because they didn't know if they could do it or if the person they cast could do it, and how little we could do to, to the male character to make him still be male, but not so obviously done with prosthetics or special effects. I don't get out a lot of meet new people. 
Uh, why, why not? I just don't. 